Hello, welcome to my house. This is the uh, dining room in my house here in California. And what you see behind me is the results of the grouping exercise from the Innovate Education Workshop that I held in early May. Now, the uh, dining room, which you can't see off camera here, is that I basically had to dismantle my uh, wife's dining room in order to have enough wall space to actually do it. Now, I did a video, I posted it last week, so you can take a look at how I did the grouping exercise. But that's really not the topic for this week's podcast. This week's podcast is really addressing a common question that I get, primarily from parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, about how they can actually encourage and enhance the creativity skills that the kids that they're interested in should have. So this week I'm going to talk a little bit about, one, some resources that I've found, but also share some stories about what my wife and I did with our own kids. Now, from the resource perspective, I came across the book when I was at the TED conference this year, a book called New World Kids, The Parent's Guide to Creative Thinking. Uh, the authors are Susan Marcus and Susie Monday. Um, it's a book that I uncovered, like I said, in the, uh, in the bookstore at TED this year. And what I found interesting about this particular book was the fact that it's not just a, a book that gives you a bunch of theory. Lots of really great exercises, but the main thrust for the book is about helping your kids discover the area of creativity that they're most interested in. Um, it's not about, you know, creativity being one size fits all, but there's areas of interest. We all have areas of interest. You know, in my case, it's photography. In my wife's case, it's stained glass. For other, you know, whatever it is, kid, the point here in this book is helping kids uncover what that area of creativity is. Now, in our own kids, I have three, uh, and I've shared this in the podcast in the past, where my wife and I, we made the, the, the conscious decision to homeschool our kids. So from the time my kids were in kindergarten until their first day in college, we taught them at home. Uh, we, all of our kids are now graduated from college. Two of them have master's degree. We're quite proud of them. But during the process of homeschooling, we uncovered how hard it really is to teach from the standpoint that in our case, we had three different learning styles. We had one that was an auditory learner. You know, you could have the conversation, you could explain it to them, they get it. We had a visual learner, give them a book, they could read it, they got it. In the third case, we had a tactile learner. In this case, what is it that they needed to be able to touch, feel, manipulate, take apart, then they were able to get it. So that tactile side of the learning activities. The result was is that we had to go create a custom curriculum for all three of our kids. Now when it came to the creativity and innovation, given my background, you could imagine I wanted to make sure it was part of the educational process for my kids. But I'm not a big believer in just adding it as a subject, so reading, writing, arithmetic, creativity, innovation. It doesn't work like that. In my case, how can we weave it in across the subject? So how do you make math but have the kids apply creativity to it? How do they do that in science? How do they do that? in reading and writing. So you weave it in as part of the learning process such that when they get in the real world and they see a problem, they're not looking for the rote automatic answer. They know how to apply creativity to discover the range of possible answers and to get to a, a more creative solution to whatever the problem they're facing. And so in our case, we wove this into the subject matters for the kids based on, again, areas of interest and areas of learning style. My son being the perfect example, he's a Lego nut. So growing up, we bought all of the master kits. And he literally, once we got him a new master kit, we always had to give it to him on a Friday because he would literally not sleep until he completed building it. And then once he did build it, then it was taking it apart and modifying it and doing, you know, adding other Lego pieces on it to make it look different. But it was his outlet as far as applying his tactile learning style to, uh, to that kind of a mode. So in, in, in my encouragement is, is that if you've got a, a, whether you're a child of interest, whether you're a parent, an aunt and uncle, a grandparent, or you're just somebody who's creative who wants to have influence on kids, this is the opportunity. One of the things I encourage uh, parents to do is to find a creative mentor for their kids. 
somebody who's creative in the area that the kids are interested in, whether it be photography or whether it be you know, software development or whether it's stained glass or whatever it is, find a creative mentor, somebody who is really passionate about the same area that your kids are interested in and pair them up. It could be a grandparent, it could be an aunt, or an aunt or an uncle, or it could just be somebody in your local community. But it's somebody who is passionate and who can convey that enthusiasm and passion to kids. Now back to the book here. One of the things I found in this book that I thought was really interesting and I wanted to share was really this whole concept of, you know, kind of guidelines to parents. What uh, you know, Susan and Susie titled as Tips for Parents. And I'm not going to read them all, I'm just going to read a couple of them. One is be a mirror. If you want your kids to be creative, they need to see you being creative. They need you, you know, having that passion about something where you go from nothing and you've created something. Whatever it is, be a mirror. Model what you're asking your kids to do. If, they're preparing for, if you're preparing them for the creative economy, you need to be prepared for the creative economy. The other is, is be flexible. What you're interested in, more than likely, is not what your kids are interested in. In my case, my son was into fencing. I had no background in fencing. But that was one of his creative outlets, and uh, I had to learn about fencing. So be flexible. Uh, the other is, is keep it light. Creativity is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be you know, enjoyable. It's not about, okay, every Thursday, 3 o'clock, we're going to be creative. It's about letting the kids learn and experience and, and internalize. The last is temper expectations. Yeah. What we expect as adults as creative output is not something the kids are going to be able to do right away. It's part of the maturing process. It's like, you know, you can't expect a, a third grade kid to be able to write a novel. Same thing when it comes to the creativity innovation. But at the same time, you'll be surprised at how creative kids can be when you give them, in many cases, real world problems for them to solve. And so the point here is, is this is just one set of materials and my personal experience with my own kids. There's lots of great material. If you know of, of a great material from the standpoint of books, blogs, podcasts, whatever it is, please Go back to the blog, philmckinney.com, post the list of that material on there and, and so that other parents can find out about it so they can understand or learn from your experiences and how you encourage your own kids to be more creative. So if you've got great resources, share them with others. And again, the reason, one of the reasons I'm so passionate about this is that the kids today are going to be the workforce of the future. And I am a firm believer that we're in this fundamental transition over the next five to 10 years to a creative economy. And we need to make sure that our kids are ready for that.